It's been known for a while now that Shane Watson didn't have much of a test career left. Injuries and inconsistent performances have laid him low for a while, and when he was dropped from the playing 11 after the first Ashes test this year, it signalled the beginning of the end. He said he just didn't have the fight in him to go on, physically, mentally and technically, to make a dent in test cricket anymore. It's the right time, he insisted. Watson enjoyed his most prolific year as a test batsman in 2010, when he made 897 runs in 11 tests, including 8 half-centuries and a century. That even earned him the Allen Border medal the following year. Then, in 2013, he nearly went a notch higher, scoring 810 runs in 12 tests, with his highest coming in the Ashes finale, where Australia were playing for pride. Watson also captained Australia in one test against India in New Delhi in March 2013, after the infamous homework gate incident. Watson retires with 3,731 runs in 59 tests at an average of 35.19. He made four centuries and 24 half centuries, with his highest of 176 against England at the Oval in September 2013. He also picked up 75 wickets. Australia are almost like, it looks like they, they want to just sever all ties with their recent past. They want to move ahead, move uh, past the era of Michael Clark and the others and under Stephen Smith and David Warner enter a new era where uh, someone like Shane Watson probably doesn't have, have a place. And he's admitted it himself that uh, he said uh, when, he, when he announced his retirement that he wasn't physically, mentally or technically there when it came to test cricket. I think it, in the end it really was a matter of Shane Watson convincing himself more than anything else that, that he had to leave the scene. There's Mitchell Marsh and Marcus Stoinis and others uh, who perform similar roles as, as Watson has over the years. He's of course been a wonderful cricketer, but it, it really was a matter of him convincing himself that he had to leave the scene.